Hi, my name is Parisa. Welcome to this YouTube channel, BioBliss. Uh, I hope you have a good time listening to this today's topic, which is basically the history of biology. The reason why I wanted to start off with this topic is because, you know, before we get into actual, like, biology, we want to know, you know, how it evolved and what's its history about. So it's kind of going to be pretty short because there's so many things in history I could be talking about all day, right? But that's probably going to get boring after a while. So for the sake of the time, I just want to limit myself to a little bit. All right, so Bibles, yeah. All right, so history of biology, like I said, and basically the biology's beginnings is another way to put that. And I also like this picture, that's why I put it. <laughs> All right, so this is a quote that by Ariel Durant, and I felt like this quote is really true. It's like makes a lot of sense. The laws of biology are the fundamental lessons of history, which makes so much sense because they actually are lessons of history. And it's not just biology, it's honestly any type of science. All right, so these are the table of contents. So one is we're going to be, there's obviously an intro. And then there's the father of biology, which is an ancient Greek philosopher. I hope you can guess by now. Number two are the branches of biology. There are three main branches of biology. Within those branches, there are many more branches, but those are the three main. And, you know, there's so many famous biologists. That's number three, six famous biologists. But I'm just going to put six because I don't want to put too many that it feels like an overload of information. And number four is some exciting news that I have at the end. So keep watching this video till the end. All right, so we have this number. It's... 198 million. All right, so this number 100, 198 million is actually the number of COVID cases, total COVID cases worldwide. And to be honest, for me, I have to say that there could be more cases, but there isn't. And why? Well, it's because of how scientists specifically biologists, have evolved their methods and techniques since a very long time ago. For example, the bubonic plague. It happened in Europe, you know, some centuries ago, and almost had the whole population die. I think the whole population kind of almost died. Anyway, but for COVID, many people are still able to survive. In fact, more than like 60% are surviving still. And why? Well, that's because of two reasons. One, we kind of adapted over time, and we might be more immune to some more diseases you know, from our ancestors. Thanks, ancestors. And two, are we're able to make vaccines and help prevent the spread with more great techniques like wearing a mask and washing our hands. And that also helped. So I feel like the history of biology is important, just like the history of anything. So introducing our history of biology. Biology is the study of life. Simple as that. Bio is life and logi is the study of it. The history of biology is the timeline of studying the living world and how our research of learning about living things evolved over time. So, who is the father of biology? Well, the first person known to discover biology as a part of a science must have had a profession involving the thinking of their surroundings. And if you haven't guessed already, it was a philosopher, specifically the Greek philosopher Aristotle. Before him, there were, of course, many other philosophers that, you know, or philosophers, they would think about their surroundings and ask reasonable questions and etc. And they had speculated theories of their own, of the origins of life and, life and earth. But their research wasn't proved by scientific reasoning and investigation, so it didn't really matter. And Aristotle was the first to have some scientific reasoning to prove his discoveries, which is why he's the father of biology. All right, so now are the three main branches of biology. So the first one is botany, the second one's zoology, and the third one's microbiology. And you know, biology is a science that studies living organisms and their life processes. And in science, it has multiple branches that go with greater in detail studying issues such as evolution, nutrition, reproduction, and etc. So these are the three main branches. And within them, there's many more, of course. So botany is basically the study of plants. It includes their physiology, structure, genetics, ecology, and many more. And, you know, examples are flowers and trees. For zoology, um, it's the study of animals and humans. 
uh, it includes their structure, behavior, classification, and distribution of animals. For microbiology, it's the study of living organisms that are too small to be seen with the visible eye. Micro, small. And some examples of those are bacteria and protists. So here is like a picture of, you know, the three main branches and many more branches within for botany, zoology, and microbiology. All right, and here are some listed below there. Okay, so next. Okay, so here are six famous biologists and their discoveries. So there's so many biologists in the world, you can't, I, it's hard to just pick six, but I just pick six, you know, to keep it simple. So the first one is Charles Darwin. He made it the theory of natural selection and his book, Origin of the Species, which convinced many of the reality of evolution. Next is Gregor Mendel. He founded the science of genetics by identifying rules of heredity that traits from parents to offspring. Third, um, Alexander Fleming. He discovered the antibiotic substance that could treat wounds and, you know, infections like, which is now we know called penicillin. Then we have Louis Pasteur and he discovered anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic meaning bacteria that can survive without oxygen. Pretty cool, right? And he also is about the germ theory of disease. If you don't know what that is, that's totally fine. And invented food preservation, which we call pasteurization based on his last name. Cool, right? <laughs> and, and then next we have Rosalind Franklin. Uh, she provided experimental data to understand the structure of DNA. And, you know, she said that DNA can exist in two forms. And what I feel like about Rosalind Franklin is like, I feel like she's not credited as much as she should be. And the reason why is because, you know, Watson and Crick have been the two uh, biologists that have been credited of, you know, having the more clear version of what DNA looks like and everything. And that's true, but Watson and Crick used Rosalind Franklin's notes. So she should also get the credit too, because she technically came with it first. And moving on to Carl Linnaeus, he's the one that formalized the system of naming organism calling, and it's called um, binomial nomenclature. And he's the father of taxonomy. If you don't know what taxonomy is, it's basically how we're, you know, grouped into different groups based on our characteristics. And binomial nomenclature is like the two word system of to name different species. All right. And now for some exciting news, I will actually be having starting some biology classes for you all. And there's more information coming out soon. So check it out later. And here are some research resources you can check out too. And thanks. And if you have any questions, then you can comment them down below. And even if you learned something new or you want to share something about anything, honestly, you can also comment down below. I'm up for anything. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had a good time listening. Please subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye!